Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies all hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, to the saints in the chat, to the ones around the world we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Boys, get y'all butt up here and sit down. <clears throat> this is, uh, you better stop talking back. This is, uh, uh, da, 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 da. What did we talk about last week? I don't even remember. Last week, oh, I know what we talked about. We talked about uh, John chapter five, right? So we talked about Yahushua, he was in Jerusalem and he went down in Jerusalem. Uh, he is talking to the people. I was just playing with you, boy. You can go eat. Uh, uh, he went down in Jerusalem and he uh, he was he was talking to the people. And remember, he started to get challenged. Right. So some of the people started to challenge him because he had doing miracles and it was the Sabbath. Right. And remember, it was the man who was, he was sitting by the pool. And we talked about the pool had multiple entry points to the pool. But he was paralyzed. He was trying to get to the pool. Y'all sure walked up to him. He is like, you know, what I'm saying when you get going to get in the pool, the man looking like, man, I can't move. And I ain't got nobody that to pick me up and put me in there. Y'all, she was like, no, nah, just pick up your mat. Go ahead and walk, right? Now that he picked up the mat and walked, he ran. And people were told him, look, you can't be carrying your, you know what I'm saying? Can't be carrying your bed on the Sabbath. He said, no, nah, the man told me to do it. They're like, who told you to do that? And he didn't know his name. Bumped into him again, you know what I'm saying? And he told him his name was Yao Shua. He was like, oh, okay. And after that, they told him, Yao Shua is the one who told me to do it. So they chased down Yao Shua and they started talking to him. Yao Shua was then letting them know, like, man, look, my father worked on the Sabbath, so I got to work on the Sabbath, making itself equal. And that's how they saw it. So they sought to kill him over that, right? They sought to, they sought to put him to death over that. So um, Yahweh Shua started to talk to him about, you know, all the stuff he was doing. He's saying, look, I can bear witness of myself, but that don't mean nothing, right? If somebody else bear witness of me, it means something, and that's John. But I don't even take witness from men, right? Then he went on to kind of explain that. The miracles that he that he does, that's what bears witness of him from the Father. And the fact that uh, the whole scripture testifies of him bears witness of him. He told us, if we don't listen to Moses, you know what I'm saying? That's why they, we don't believe him. And that's that's really what it comes down to. And that's why one of the things, you know, those of us who, who are doing the Bible in the year, that's why we start off in chronological order. Because it's important to understand Moses first. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to believe Moses first because Moses is the one that told us it's going to be a prophet that, that's like unto him. You know what I'm saying? That comes. And whatever that prophet says, Most High God is going to put his words in his mouth and whatever that prophet says will be required of us. Right? Moses told us that. So if we don't believe that, then we're not going to believe what Yahushua was talking about. And that's what Yahushua was trying to explain to the people. Right? <clears throat> so let's, let's go ahead and pick up... Uh, Pick up, you know what I'm saying, just kind of understanding where we are. Remember, we are, um, we're with Yahushua, and Yahushua is in Jerusalem at this point, right? He's in Jerusalem. He went down to Jerusalem for the feast, probably the Feast of Weeks, right? So he went down to Jerusalem for the feast, and he's in, uh, he's in Jerusalem. He just finished the conversation. Now we're about to go back up north to Galilee, right, to the slums, right? So he in a good part of town. He in the nice, you know what I'm saying, it's nice downtown. Think of it like downtown, you know what I'm saying? It's nice, you know what I'm saying, decorated, everything look good. Now he about to go back to the hood, right? He about to go back to the hood, the side of town where everybody poor, don't nobody got no respect, you know what I'm saying? That's where he had it. So this is uh, Luke chapter 4. It's Luke chapter 4, give me uh, verse 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Let them get none of my good one now. You can get it. Don't let them get none of my good one. Let's put the two. That's good. One of your regular. When you got, let them get it. Verse what? Okay, that's all right. That means he's somebody got it. You right. I put it at the bottom. 
Luke 4, verse 1. I mean, they search for it. <laughs> That's bad kid. It's Luke chapter 4, verse uh, 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Yahushua returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. <clears throat> and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right. So look, as his custom was, what was his custom? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath when? day. When? On the Sabbath, on the Sabbath day. day. Right. It's important that we understand it because it's telling us what Yahushua's custom was. Right? We follow, we've been taught to follow all types of customs. This stuff is right in the same book. We're not reading out of no book that's different from the book that our moms and dads, when they was taking us to church, it's the same book that they was teaching out of, same book that, the book that they was uh, preaching out of, same book. We didn't make nothing up. We didn't just put this here. It, in the same Sunday, look, in Sunday school, they used to teach us the Ten Commandments. And one of them was keep the Sabbath, right? In Sunday school, they used to tell us to keep the Sabbath. This was in the same book. It don't even phase people. You get to the point where the word means nothing to you, right? Because your tradition is more important. And Christians don't realize it, but it's the same spirit that's in Christians that is, that's in the Pharisees. Right. Where we put traditions over the word of the most high God. That is what it's about. That is what he's upset about. Right. A lot of people, the Christian got themselves confused thinking that he's mad at the Pharisees because the Pharisees is too strict. You know what I'm saying? Like that went, give me one charge when he went to the Pharisees. He was like, you're being too strict on the people. You're making them follow. You're trying too hard to make them to follow the law of God. No, that's not what he's mad about. He mad because they're hypocrites that they are not following the law. Right? We're going we gonna, to we gonna break down a lot of this stuff. Yahushua's custom was to go on the Sabbath day and open up the books and read. And this is why we do this, right? Sabbath night, right? This is why we do this on, 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 on the Sabbath day. We get together on, on our fellowship hour. Right? This is a custom that we want to make ourselves and pattern ourselves after the Messiah. Keep going. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, y'all got to pay attention to this thing. <laughs> Look, they came. So, we got the Bible, right? And we get the Bible for us is just one book. You know what I'm saying? So you you pick up this whole thing right here. And it just be, it just, it just, I got all types of cores hanging out. It just, it's just one book, right? This one book. But when you open it up, you know what I'm saying? It's a the book of Genesis. It's a the book of uh, uh, Exodus, the book of Leviticus, right? And it goes through all of the multiple books. So the way that that happens is there's a bunch of isolated books, right? And then back at this time, they like big old scrolls, right? Because the paper, you see how thin they got to make this paper? You ever, you ever look at a sheet of paper in the Bible? It's a different type of paper than the paper you would get from any other, a lot of other books that you read, right? If you just, if you just go into a notebook, you know what I'm saying? Go into a store, grab a notebook. The paper don't feel like this paper. And the reason is they make this paper extremely thin. That's why it rips so easy. That's why you can't let no kids play at the darn book because they get the ripping page. You try to play, you try to read the Bible with a baby. You know that quick baby hand, you know, the baby hands be quick. That quick baby hand, grab it, just rip a page right up out of it. I got a couple of them ripped out of mine, right? And it's just because I was reading it with my son and bow, grab that thing quick, right? And so the pages are super thin. And the reason why they make them thin is so they can fit that many pages in a book. Right. They make the words as small as possible. You see, you see a lot of these Bibles like you got to you got to be wearing your you know, what I'm saying you ain't even old yet. And you got the readers because it's like I got to be able to see the paper boys because they make them small because they're trying to fit all of these multiple books into one big book. Right. But back then it wouldn't have been no it wouldn't have been no like no little pages and small, small print. It would have been big old scrolls. Right. 
So they would have had rolls of papers or tablets, right? Each book would have had its own set. So when they hand you the book of Isaiah, that's that's like a book, right? This is the book of Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? And this is the book of, you know what I'm saying, whatever, right? And they would hand, they had different books for each one. So they came over to Yahushua and they handed him the whole book of Isaiah. So Yahushua broke. Y'all got to pay attention to what Yahushua about to do. He popped that thing open and watch how this boy sound re. Y'all got to put yourself in the pit. I got to set the scene for y'all. Y'all mess around. Y'all mess around not imagine it right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to imagine this thing correctly. This guy is like a little bit of notoriety. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we know this guy is special. We know that. We not all walking around thinking he the Messiah, though. But we know he's special. And we know some people think he the Messiah. There's a couple of these knuckleheads that think he the Messiah. But you know what? I didn't watch this boy grow up. You know what I'm saying? I've watched him grow That's uh, that married boy, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? I didn't watch this boy grow up. You know what I'm saying? I didn't watch it. He tried to learn how to I, I remember when he slipped trying to ride that bike. Right? I remember when his family was hungry. They didn't have no money. They had to come to my house, and I fed all of them. Right? You got to imagine that they had regular interactions, and in their mind, oh, that ain't nobody but Yahushua. Right? Now, the boy is special. He might be a little autistic, but the boy is special. They know he's special, but they ain't nobody but Yahushua in their mind, right? So this thing, Yahushua, grown now. He go down. He go down to, to Jerusalem. He make an uproar. He come back and he got a little bit of a following. He doing some, doing some miracles and some special. Okay, we ain't never seen nothing like that. But then all of a sudden, he pop up. They hand him the book of Isaiah and watch how this man talk and just put yourself in their shoes when he talking. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he is. A right. Hold on. Hold on. So he opened up the book and then he didn't just go. You know, a good Christian, you got to think about a good Christian, a good Christian, a closed AI like this. And they just flip pages with their eye closed and be like, well, Lord, just put me on the page or what you want to say to me. And they randomly get a page and they open one eye and see if it's what they want. And they close the eye because they ain't what they want. Then they start flipping again and then do another random and like, I don't like that one either. And then they get tired of not getting what they want. So then they just actually look up the verse they actually want to go to and they go, then they close the eye and be like, Lord speaking to me now, and then they read it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what I'm saying? They look for something like that, make their butt feel good. You know what I'm saying? And try to act like they randomly land on that page, and y'all spoke to them, right? That's not that's not what y'all sure did. Y'all sure opened up the book. He knew exactly what he was looking for. He went right to it. Book say, oh, hold on, now give me one second. It's right, no, it's around here somewhere. Who who copied this one? You know what I'm saying? Cause everything was hand. You didn't. You couldn't put nothing in a copier. You know what I'm saying? We got, if we want to, look, if I want to print another Bible right now, I just go put it in the copier a bunch of times, right? And it'll come out looking exactly like this one in terms of the print of the words, right? He didn't have that luxury. If somebody wanted to copy something, somebody had to look at it on one hand, copy like this. You remember when you would learn how to write letters? You know how they had the, they had the, like the little, the dotted version. And you got to write it like that and be like, oh, okay, I can do that. And then you do it like they always make you do stuff seven times or whatever. And then on the next line, you got to look up at it and be like, okay, I ain't got the dots no more. And then you got to write it. You know what I'm saying? Write it like that. Now it look crazy. You did, When you did it without the dots, that thing look crazy. You looking like, you'll be ashamed of your darn G. Your G look like a darn six. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, what is going on? So then you write it. You know what I'm saying? You write it, you write it. Well, that's how it was when they was copying the scriptures. So they would take this book, and then one person looking at it was like, okay, say that, say that, okay, say that. And then he write it, and he copied a whole book of Isaiah. So he got it. They handwriting probably wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? So he looking like, okay, who did that? This one might be out of order. All right, hold on, I'll find it. He got right to it. And then watch what he said. The spirit of Yahuwah is upon me because he has anointed mm -hmm. me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. Then the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all so now anybody who knows that scripture, right? If you read, if we, we ain't about, we about to go to it right now. But if you read that scripture, it's clear that that scripture is talking about the Messiah. Right? So what he's really saying is he quote from this scripture. Oh, you just got to you have to picture like how arrogant it would look to anybody who don't know. Right. When you don't know this to you is a regular guy special now, but a regular special guy. He's not the Messiah in your mind. Matter of fact, that's your Mary and Joseph old boy. Right. He came around. He opened the book. Looked for what he needed, read it, closed it, looked everybody dead in their eye and said, in y'all hearing, that was just fulfilled. What I just read, you've witnessed this be fulfilled. And at that point, the people got to react to that. Everybody kind of got to look at that and be like, okay. What does that mean to me? Right? Let's see what they let's see how they reacted. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And right. They looking like, ain't this Joseph boy? Right? Like, like who does he think he is? Ain't this Joseph boy? Watch this. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, When great mm -hmm. heaven was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, Except unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the days of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him right. to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built. That they might. Now, this is, now this is home. why they got mad, right? So first he's talking and he says, what y'all just heard me read is fulfilled right now, right? So they look at him like, no way. You know what I'm saying? So then when they started to doubt, then Yahushua took some shots at him. He said, surely y'all going to hear this proverb or y'all going to say this proverb to me. Y'all going to tell me, oh, if you, a, if you a doctor, pretty much when you say physician, he said, if you a doctor, why don't you heal yourself? Right? He's prophesying about what they, you know what I'm saying, what's going to be said to him when he's on the cross. They're going to try to tell him to save himself, right? Then after that, he said, don't y'all realize that a prophet is not accepted in his own place, in his own home, right? So the people that's closest to you, because they're so familiar with you, they overlook how special you are, right? And we've all dealt with that, and we all will deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Like if you like my son, right? My son good at basketball, right? He like, you know what I'm saying? He aight at basketball, right? So he played basketball. I'm going to call him aight. You know, I look at him every day. I see he don't work hard. I see he don't get up. He don't practice enough. He don't shoot. I be looking at him like, man, he be darn lazy. So in my mind, he could be so much better, right? But then he go out and play. And then the strangers, people that's outside of his home, they look at him. They be looking like, boy, your boy good. Your boy know how to play. Y'all, he gonna be something, this, that, and other. But because I'm close to him, I look at him, I be looking like, man, y'all don't smell his underarms when he come. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like me, I get to, I get to like, you know what I'm saying? I get a different experience with him. Right? I be, I be, I get a different experience with him. So he's not in his mind, he can grow up and be like, man, 
my daddy didn't even think I was good. You know what I'm saying? But everybody else think I'm everybody else think I'm the best thing since sliced, since sliced bread. So he'd look at it. A prophet is not accepting his own home. Well, y'all, she was saying nothing different, right? Y'all, she was saying, look, at, I'm special. They know I'm special. I do what it do. And these people know it. But because they think they so familiar with me in the flesh, they doubt me. Right. And so he's trying to explain that to him. So then he used scripture to make his point. So after that, he told him, he is like, don't y'all know? Don't y'all remember Elijah? Right. And we read about the prophet Elijah. Right. Anybody who's been keeping up with the studies, y'all remember we read about the prophet, prophet Elijah. First thing he did when he came on the scene is he shut up the skies where it, it was no rain. He stopped the whole thing from raining. Right. Because King Ahab was over there going crazy. Right. Then after that, he ran and he went to another land. Right. And when he went to, the, to a, another land, he went to a lady and a lady and her son. Right. And he helped them out, but they were Gentiles. Right. He ended up helping out Gentiles above the people in his own land, and he made the rain stop on his own people. Right. So when we read that story, we probably don't see it that way. Right. We probably don't break it down and analyze like, hmm, there's a famine in Israel and he went to people outside of Israel that are not Israelites, and he helped them. But Yahushua is highlighting that point to them. Like, hey, a prophet is not excited, accepted his own home. Look, even Elijah didn't help his own people. He ended up helping the Gentiles over his own people. Then the next thing he gave was the example of Elisha, right? And Elisha was the protege, pretty much, of Elijah. And in Elisha, similarly, there was a leper that are a man that, that had leprosy from another nation. He is from way up north. He is a Syrian, right? And he came down and he was asking for somebody to help him with leprosy. The king of Israel thought it was a setup because he looking like, why are you asking me about some leprosy? You know, I can't, what am I supposed to do with leprosy? Am I God that I can take away your leprosy? Right? But then Elisha sent, and he is like, man, what you talking about, man? Send them to me. Tell him come talk to me. So Naaman came and talked to Elisha, and Elisha was like, go ahead and uh, go into the Jordan River. Now, the Jordan River ain't nothing special. You know what I'm saying? For somebody from a different country, the Jordan River is like, is like Lake Mead to them. You know what I'm saying? The Jordan River is like nasty. Like, man, what? Nobody, nobody want to jump in the Jordan River. But he told him, go get in the Jordan River, right? Dip, I think he told himself, dip itself seven times, Right? And your skin would be like new. Your leprosy would go away. Because, you know, leprosy is that skin disease. You know what I'm saying? He's like, your leprosy, you dip yourself seven times, your leprosy would go away. And eventually, Naaman didn't want to do it at first. But eventually, Naaman did it. And when he did it, his skin was brand new. So, Yahushua uses those points how a Gentile who came to Israel was helped above the lepers in Israel. He said, don't you know that there were lepers in Israel at that time? But he helped one that was a Gentile? So he's making he's 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 retelling stories that we're all familiar with, but he's highlighting a point that we probably never noticed. Right. He's highlighting that these great men of God who all of us revere, who all of us accept and respect, helped Gentiles over Israelites. And he's using that to make the point that a prophet is not accepting his own. In other words, condemning them. In other words, saying, I'm not going to help y'all. I'm going somewhere else, right? That's the message he's sending to him. And he's making himself like the other great prophets of the past. That infuriated because that's a shot at us, right? When we looking at Yahushua, that's a shot at what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, you ain't, first of all, you ain't the Messiah and you ain't got nothing on Elijah or nothing on Elisha. Blasphemy. Now we about to get your butt. So watch what happened next. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill wherein their city was built and they might that they might cast him down headlong. Right. So they was about to throw him off of the cliff. Right. So they follow him. They kind of chase him off to where the cliff was, where the city was built. Because they built the, the city is built like on, on, on a hill, like on a little mountain. So they go, they go to the edge of it and they about to thrust him headlong. In other words, head first. You know what I'm saying? Throw that boy off head first talking to us like he lost his darn mind. Right. They ready to get right to it. 
Because there's certain things you just don't say. You don't make yourself out to be the Messiah when you're not. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to do that, definitely don't disrespect the people of the town and try to tell them that they ain't worthy of no prophet in their town. And even if you was a prophet, you wouldn't come to them. Right? So now you're looking like, oh, no, we about to throw him out. So let's see what happens. But he passing through the midst of them went his way and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And yeah, so look, uh, he left, he left and he went to Capernaum. Let me see if I can pull it up on the map real quick. I'm gonna try to pull it up on the map real quick so y'all can see it. You know what I'm saying? So he left and then he ended up going to Capernaum. Hopefully it come up on the right screen. Okay, it did. Let me put it on the screen right here so y'all can see it. So he went. He's here in Nazareth, right? Or actually here. This is Nazareth. So he's here in Nazareth. And then from there, he, you know what I'm saying, they try to throw him off a little cliff right here. So he was like, no, no, no. So he ran up. He slipped through the crowd. And then he just traveled all the way to Capernaum. So this is miles away, right? So he walked all the way to Capernaum. But now he in Capernaum. In his hometown in Nazareth, they don't mess with him like that, right? They don't. They don't look at him. They don't revere him as like they like. Oh yeah, that boy's special, but just like he's still that boy to them. You know what I'm saying? Now he went to Capernaum, and the people are not as familiar with him. So because they're not as familiar with him, he's accepted differently there. So let's see what he did at Capernaum. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Yow, thou Yahushua of Nazareth? Actually, hold what you got there. Grab, uh, instead of going there, let's grab, uh, let's grab Luke chapter 5 real quick. This is Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were wishing and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had right. so now picture what what's going on. He he he's he's in Capernaum, right? He has water right in front of him there's a couple men that's in the water fishing he has people that's also following him so what he did is he walked into so kind of kind of picture it like he's kind of trying to kind of like escaping the people like there's people following him and he's like ignoring them and just walking 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 so they following him he there's water right there and they looking like oh this man about to just walk right into the water but there's people in the boat. He jumps into one of their boats while they, while they fishing. And he asks them, like, nah, man, going out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, going out. And so they thrust out a little bit from the water so that, you know what I'm saying, he, he's away from the land a little bit. And then from there, he start teaching the people right from the boat. Right? So he start teaching them the word, teaching to them, make sure they understand what's going on. Right? Watch what happened next. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, and when they had this done, they enclosed the great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both, filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Yahshua's knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, o, o Lord. And he was astonished in all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James, the, son, the sons of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Yahshua said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth you shall catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Right? So when they saw that, right, you got to imagine, he just jumped in a boat. They know about this guy, right? He, he People, he, he, they got some, and people are following them. So they know that 
this is the Yahweh Shua that everybody talking about, right? So that's why Simon, you know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why Peter got him to give him some respect. He's looking like master. You know what I'm saying? We've been out here all day looking for fish. You know what I'm saying? But look, if you tell me to drop my net right here, fine, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't about to play you. Look at all these people. Clearly, you somebody. But let me, you know what I'm saying? Just let me let you know. Ain't nothing going to happen when I drop it because we've been out here all day. You ain't even no fisherman. But okay, I'm going to drop it just to entertain you. He dropped that thing. Thing filled up. He couldn't even get it. Net broke. He started beckoning. When he say beckoning, he, he signed into it. Hey, 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 y'all come help me out, man. Hey, look, come get all these fish. Look at all the fish. So all the boats came over there, and they all trying to get the fish. They all been out there all day looking for fish, catching little onesies, twosies. Now they got all these fish that they pulling up out of the water out of nowhere after Yahushua happened to tell them right there. Right? After they saw that, they were looking like, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my darn life. That's how they was looking like. I've never seen nothing like this in my darn life. There's not even this many fish in this lake. Right? They looking like it's impossible. It don't make sense. I've never seen nothing. They said, we drop it all. I'm done. I'm following you. Y'all, she would told them, don't worry. You caught them fish. I'm going to show you how to catch some people now. Right? So now you can see, this is how he kind of picking up the, tw the, the 12 disciples. Right? He picking them up. This is Peter. That's James. That's John. He picked them up. We talked about before in the book of John how he picked up Philip and how he picked up Nathaniel. He picked up a whole bunch of them. Right? So grab uh, grab, uh, grab Mark. This is Mark chapter 1. Give me verse 21. This is Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Right. So now he's still in Capernaum. Right. And he went into their synagogues and they talked. Right. So synagogue, think of a synagogue is like this is like, you know, what I'm saying the kind of the way we see churches. You know what I'm saying? So this is the place that everybody come together to serve the most high God. So he went to the synagogue and then he began to teach. But they were saying he didn't teach like a regular guy. Like when I when I'm up here teaching, I'm telling y'all about what I imagine or how I think it is. It was probably like this or this probably mean this or I think it mean this. Right. And that's good teaching. You know what I'm saying? I think I think I'm a good teacher. That's, you know what I'm saying? that's cool. Right. OK, now set that to the side. When he taught, it wasn't like somebody who was thinking and imagining and maybe and it's probably when he was teaching. It was matter of fact, like he was there. Right. When he was teaching in the book, it wasn't no like guessing or you know what, because if you compare this to this, if you consider all three of these. Ver no, no, no. He only do none of that. He telling you, no, that's that's what it was. This is what this means. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, that's no, that's no. Let me explain. No, this is what it say. This is what it means. Can you imagine the son of the most high God teaching you? It's probably so precise. No matter of fact, ain't no wiggle, no wobble, no way around it. Right? That's how he is teaching. It's different from what you hear from me. It's different from what any, any teaching we are. The best teacher we've ever had in our life is different from that. They, he was teaching like he was there. Like he, I don't know, like he wrote the darn book. Right? Which is amazing to people. So they listening to this man teach it, you know what I'm saying, with authority. That's how they put it. What, read it again. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Yahushua of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who you are, the Holy One of God. And Yahushua rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Right? So now you got spirits inside of a man. But y'all have to see it. I know we reading that, right? But I want y'all to see it and imagine it the way it would have looked at that point, right? He's teaching. He's teaching with authority. He's not telling you, 
And most scholars believe that when Moses said this, that he meant that's not how he teaches. The way he teaches is when Moses said this, this is what he was thinking. When Moses said this, this is what he saw. Right. He's teaching with authority. Matter of fact. Right. Then he got done teaching and somebody came up to him talking to him. Read it again. What the man said. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Yahshua of Nazareth. Are it's you- a man that said, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Yahushua of Nazareth. It's just a man talking to him. And they looking like, like man, that's that's a crazy Bob. You know, he over there doing them. You know what I'm saying? He doing the, you know what I'm saying? He doing that plan again. He on that plan again. That, that boy, he on that plan again. He always, no, don't, you, you got to ignore crazy Bob. That's how we looking at him. I mean, that's crazy darn Bob, man. You can't listen to him, man. Crazy Bob is crazy. But y'all, she will look him dead in the darn eye and watch this. Are you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And y'all, she rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Right? Mm-hmm. So y'all, she will look him dead in his eye. Don't get all animated. Don't respond to this crazy dude. Crazy dude probably yelling and being extra. He don't respond to none of that stuff. He didn't look at him like, Hold your peace. What does hold your peace mean? Shut up. Shut your darn mouth and come out of them. That, that's it. And what you think happened? Let's see. And when the unclean spirit had told, torn him, he cried with a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region around about Galilee. And We've for- been desensitized to stuff. When they saw that, they called it, they asked what? What doctrine is this? What new doctrine, what new teaching is this? In other words, we have never seen nothing like this. I know Crazy Bob. Crazy Bob is around here every Sabbath asking for money, saying this same type of crazy stuff to people, walking up to him saying, I know Crazy Bob. Crazy Bob ain't just pop up. This ain't no cleverly devised scheme, right? I know Crazy Bob. I kind of heard about y'all, sure. You mean to tell me he looked Crazy Bob in his face, told something to come out of him, and immediately it happens. You telling me even an evil spirit obeys this man? Hmm. I've never heard of nothing like this. Unless you have heard of something like this. Grab uh grab first chronicles chapter 18. Is it first chronicles or second chronicles? King Ahab, it got to be Second Chronicles. Give me Second Chronicles, chapter eighteen. Second Chronicles, chapter eighteen. Give me verse three. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will be with thee in the war. Right? So Ahab want to go to war. Ahab is from the northern tribes. He's he's from Israel, the northern tribes. And then he asked in the king, he's the king, right? Ahab is the king. Then he asked in the king, his brother, not his blood brother, but the brother of his people, he's asking king uh, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat also is a Hebrew, like Ahab is a Hebrew, but Jehoshaphat is the king of the southern tribe, right, of Judah, the southern kingdom, right? So now you have these two different kings of brother nations, right, Israel and Judah. They have the same people, just two different kingdoms, right? And they kind of being buddy-buddy. Ahab wants to go to war. He wants Jehoshaphat to come with him. 
Right? So Jehoshaphat was like, yeah, man, I'm with you. My people was like, yo, people, we together, we unified in this. But watch what Jehoshaphat say. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee, of the word of Yahuwah today. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together the prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, right. So he, Jehoshaphat asked me, says, go talk to the prophets first. Let's just make sure I'm, look, I'm with you in this, right? Because Jehoshaphat served the most high God. Ahab doesn't. Right, Ahab served whoever, whoever, whatever, clever, whatever his wife owned. You know what I'm saying? That's what Ahab owned, right? But Jehoshaphat served the Most High God, so Jehoshaphat like, look, I mess with you, my man. You my man. I want to go, but talk to the prophet first. Let's just see if we're supposed to be doing this. So Jehoshaphat called all the prophets, but it turns out that all of Jehoshaphat's prophets are false prophets. But he get a whole bunch of them together. Not, not Jehoshaphat. Uh, I mean, uh, Ahab. Ahab got, you know, he got a whole bunch of false prophets. So he brought a whole bunch of false prophets together and they all start prophesying and watch what they say. And they said, go up for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah besides that we might inquire of him? Right. He looking like, mm, I hear these boys, but they ain't really prophets of Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no prophets of Yah now? You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Keep going. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of Yahuwah, but I hate him, for he never prophesies good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and sat in the void place at the entering of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Canaanah, eh, had made him horns of iron and said, Thus says Yahuwah, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let right, so now they him. sent a messenger to go get Micaiah. So the messenger look, trying to look out for him. He look, 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 man. Everybody is telling the king to go on up. Everybody's speaking positive. The king know you always negative. You always saying something against him. He trying to coach him like, listen, when I let you out, this your chance, bro. You've been locked up all this time. If you just say the right thing, bro, you free. You can go. Like, this is your chance. Don't say nothing stupid like you always be saying. He trying to coach him. Like, look, bro, it's going to work out for you. I kind of like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of mess with you. When you get up there, just don't blow it. Right? Read it. Watch this. And the messenger that went to Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let your word, I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak good. And Micaiah said, as Yahuwah lives, even what my God says, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper. And you shall deliver right? it. So Micaiah, hand. he came to him. He is like, because the, the messenger told him, he is like, look, when you go up there, just, just say the right, man. Look, just say it like everybody else saying it. Don't go up there saying nothing crazy. So he said, look, what, what the most high God say, I'm going to say. So he get up there and Ahab asked him, he was like, okay. You, you got to imagine Ahab rolling his eyes when he asked him, like, you already know. He telling, he telling Joseph, look, I already know. I already know. Look, watch, watch what you say. I already know. He do it every time. Watch this. Okay. We're going to go up to Ram Gilead. Here we go. Are we going to be prosperous? You know what I'm saying? Micaiah, watch what Micaiah say. Say it again. Watch it again. Read it again. And he said, go. Go up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Right? You got to imagine Micaiah said it sarcastically, though. Like, oh, king. Absolutely. Go. No, no, no. Go up. Prosper. They are 1,000% going to be delivered into your hands. Like, sarcastic. Putting all the extras on it. Because watch how the king responds. And the king said to him, how many times shall I adjure thee that you shall say nothing but the truth to me in the name of Yahuwah? Right? In other words, stop playing. 
tell me what Yahuwah, what you saying that Yahuwah got to say. Right? Because he already knew he is lying. Like, man, come on now, man. Just tell me what Yahuwah got to say. Go ahead. Get it out. I already know you negative all the time. Watch your whole back. I'm telling you every single time this is how he is. Stop playing. Go ahead. Tell us. You know what I'm saying? Should I go up? Yes or no? Watch what, watch what he say. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. Mm. The Lord said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to the house, to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again, right. So, so then Ahab look at Jehoshaphat. He's like, see, I told you. I told you every time I talked to this boy, he got something to say. Evil every time. Right. But watch what happened next. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah. I saw this Yahuwah. is Micaiah again. So Micaiah kept talking after that. He is like, but I got more to say. Therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah. And watch this prophecy that he gives. I saw Yahuwah sitting upon his throne and all uh -huh. the heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Mm -hmm. and, one, and one spake, saying after this manner, and another spake after that manner. Then came out a spirit. And stood a what? Before a spirit. Mm, what and, kind of spirit? And stood before Yahuwah and mm -hmm. said, I will entice him. And Yahuwah said, how? How so? How will you do this? Right? This spirit came up to Yahuwah. Came up to who? The spirit. Uh, and it came up to who? The spirit came and stood before Yahuwah and said, I will entice him. So this spirit came to the Yahuwah, the most high God. And it said, I will entice him. And uh, Yahuwah say, how will you do that? You know what I'm saying? Yahuwah is curious. He's like, how in the world will this spirit entice him? Watch what the spirit says it's going to be. And Yahuwah said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit into the mouth of all his prophets. And Yahuwah said, you shall entice him and you shall also prevail. Go out. And, and then what do he say after that? Go out and even do so. Get your butt out there and do just like I told you. And let's see what happened next. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil against you. Yahuwah has put a lying spirit in all of these prophets. And Yahuwah has spoken evil against you. I'm telling you, we ain't never seen nobody command evil spirits except for Yahuwah. When these people saw Yahushua tell that evil spirit to come out of that man, they were looking like, what is this new teaching? We've never seen nothing like this. But you know what? Maybe we have. Because Yahuwah commands evil spirits. Yahuwah tell the evil spirit to go jump in a man and come out of a man. And Yahushua already told us, I do as my father does. Right. We have never seen a human being take command of an evil spirit and the evil spirit is obedient to him. These people struggle with the idea like, man, no, y'all sure ain't God. He's just a great prophet. Y'all sure ain't God. He's just the Messiah. This, that, and other. He the whole time this man is telling you who he is. Right. A lot of people just not paying attention. A lot of people not listening. You show me another human being outside of those who came from Yahushua or Yahushua himself that commands evil spirits as it relates to people. Doesn't exist. Only other, only other thing that's done that is Yah. Right? Jump on back. This is uh, where we leave off. Uh, Mark 21, verse 28. It's Mark chapter 21, verse 28. These boys will be trying to teach this book. They don't know this darn book. They making a darn mess out of it. Walking around teaching people. How you open up your mouth, teach people? You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you ain't God. The Bible never said that. No, you just don't know it. You don't know what it's saying. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what, you don't know what the book is saying. Because you never take the time to learn it. You got to sit your butt. Look, it's an order to what we do. The first thing you got to do is sit your butt down and learn. 
You shouldn't be running your mouth. You shouldn't be trying to teach nobody. You shouldn't be trying to do nothing. You shouldn't be out there trying to feed the homeless. You shouldn't be trying to build no darn church. None of that stuff should be happening. You should spend and dedicate yourself to studying and learning the book because you don't know nothing. We don't know anything. We've been taught lies our whole life. And then we get up, we read one darn scripture that we feel like touched our darn soul. And then we think now we apt to open up our own church and start our own darn camp. We haven't learned nothing. We haven't sat down and paid attention. We don't know the scripture. We can't recall this stuff. Yo, sure, open up the book. Go right to what he's looking for. Man, know what he's looking for. He's not just open up the book and then letting, letting something come to him. He teach it with authority. Trying to figure out where we think we get up and just get up and want to teach something. Post on Twitter like you know what you're talking about. You don't know the book yet. Y'all get cut up in all this stuff. Oh, but I can prove that the Edomite is the white man. Shut up. Talking about all this stuff that don't even matter. I can prove that it's okay to have multiple wives. That's what y'all say. All this stuff y'all talk about is flesh. How in the world you going to understand spiritual things? You still stuck on flesh. All this stuff is flesh. Ain't even talking about nothing. Meanwhile, the man trying to talk to you the whole book and you miss it. It's going right over your head every single time. Because you don't spend the time trying to learn. Which is fine, but don't teach. Don't try to teach. Don't try to get up. Don't try to make yourself look like you know something. Shut your butt up. Sit down and learn or just shut up forever. If you want to teach and you want to make yourself shut up, take years. Spend some time and just in the book. I ain't saying go to no, don't go to no seminary, make yourself stupid, right? Just get in the book by yourself and read and learn it and challenge yourself and force yourself to understand what's happening. Every single word. Force yourself to understand what's happening. Then after you do that for a couple of years, then you can get your butt up and say you act like you know something. But until then, sit down, man. They're looking at this man like, what is this new doctrine? We ain't never seen nothing like this before. They knew what it meant when they saw it. When they saw, when they saw a man command a spirit to come out, of, they knew that they saw something that was, that was, this is different. It's just us that desensitize when we see it. We looking like, oh, well, look at Jesus. Oh, well, look at, yeah, no, no. I mean, I can command spirits to come out of men. No, you can't. Shut up. No, don't you know that Jesus gave that power to everybody that believed? No, he didn't. Shut up. You don't know the book. Keep going. This is Mark chapter 1, what? 28? And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon, right? So mother, Peter, Peter, other name is Simon, right? So it's called him Simon. But Simon, he he uh he from Capernaum, so he in his whole town, right? So after that, he went into his house. Now watch this. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he, he, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And they that, fa and they that found him, when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And Yahushua moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he was clean. Right, so as soon as he got done speaking, immediately the book say the leprosy departed from him. In other words, people who's looking at it, they can see his skin. Right, they see it like clear up. Right, so immediately the leprosy departed from him. What else? 
And he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away. And he said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. Which who commanded? Moses commanded. Keep going. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Yahushua could no more openly enter into the city, but was without, but was outside in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Right? So, you know what I'm saying? Yahushua told him, keep your mouth shut about this now. You know what I'm saying? But that man walking, no, nah, man, no, the God, y'all, I'm telling you. No, you know that Negro, that Yahushua, that's a bad boy. That's a bad Negro. I'm telling that boy, put it, mate, you saw my skin? My skin, I'm you you know me my whole life. You ain't never seen my skin this clear. You know what I'm saying? Wiped it right on off. They saw it. Look, Joey, you saw it, didn't you? Whole skin just started clearing up instantly. As soon as he said it, right? I'm telling you, I went down over there. I did, you know what I'm saying? Made my little sacrifice, came back. Couldn't wait to tell y'all. Right? He telling everybody. Everybody like, yo, sure. Man, I've been hearing about that man. Where he at? He over there right now? He's still over there? Well, I'm about to go see about him too. I got the darn bunion. Maybe he can heal that. You know what I'm saying? So everybody trying to go over there and trying to see what's going on they all chasing him and trying to find out where he is who he is and like share into because it's like this is amazing we hearing and seeing stuff that we've never heard or saw before right keep going And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, as he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Yahushua saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, uh oh, we lost brother T. I got your question, uh, Sister Pam. We gonna we gonna stop and talk about that. Let's see. All right, we lost you for whatever reason, bro. You got to go back for me a little bit. All right. And when they could not uh, come sick by, of the palsy, son. Oh, yeah. And Yahshua saw their face. He said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But mm -hmm. there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Now, mm -hmm. I, just listen to the dilemmas that they're dealing with. Right? Last week, he, he healed somebody on the Sabbath. And told them to pick up their mat and walk. They got on him. It's like, listen, it's the Sabbath. You can't tell nobody to work. You know what I'm saying? And y'all said, look, I'm, I mean, y'all sure said, I'm working just like y'all working because that's my father. Right? And they were upset with him because they felt like he made himself equal to God. Then fast forward, this man talking about he's the Messiah. And what you just read has been fulfilled in your ears. Right. Then he casts out a evil spirit and the evil spirit obeys him. Now he's telling a man, your sins have been forgiven. All these things, they looking like, who does this guy think he is? So even if I see your miracles, even if I know you, you kind of talking crazy to me. Because Moses did miracles, but he never made himself equal to God. In fact, the one time that Moses said, we, you know what I'm saying, must we bring this water out this rock, Most High God punished them immediately. Immediately, Most High God came out like, nope, you didn't believe me. Most High God charged him with unbelief because he used the word we. And now here you got Yahushua multiple times making himself equal to the most high God. And guess what? We don't see nothing happening. So the people are looking at it like, nah, if Moses said that, most high God is check him. So I'm about to check Yahushua. All right. I'm about to check Yahushua. Right. And Sister Sharon is right. That's right. 
Most High God is speaking through Moses and he's speaking through, uh, through uh, Yahushua. Right? But nevertheless, Yahushua is making himself equal. Moses, all he said was, we bring this rock and he got punished. Right? But Most High God is speaking through both of them. Yahushua is different. Different situation with Yahushua. Right? And that's what we're about to be learning about throughout all this gospel. Just different ways. I just want to stop and highlight all the times that he's saying something that traditionally would be seen as something like, whoa, no, nah, a man can't say that. Right. And we got to pick a side. If he if he's not God, then he got to get the Moses treatment. But if he is, he keep Moses alone. You know what I'm saying? Watch. Uh, watch. Watch what happened next. And immediately when Yahushua perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? What look, he said, look, this Yahushua's a bad boy. So you got to let me paint the scene for you. He in the house, right? He in the house. Everybody, he's famous now. This dude been running around talking about he healed my leprosy. Everybody know Leopard George. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know Leopard George. You know, Leopard George with the white spot. Everybody know Leopard George. So Leopard George been running around here the whole time. All of a sudden, Leopard George is healed. And we can all see it with our own eyes. He's been like that for years. And now we see it with our own eyes. So now Leopard George running around telling everybody, Yahushua is responsible for this. He the one who did this. Yahushua, Yahushua, Yahushua. The man is getting famous out here. So he's trying to hide out. He tried to hide out in the boat. Now he's running from the boat to here, to there, to there. Now he's trying to hide out in, in Peter's house. Was it Peter House or is it a different house now? Mm, this is a different house now, right? Yeah. So he, he tried to hide in Peter House. Then he got out of Peter House and he went to a different house. Right? When they went to the house, they came from the roof because everybody was crowding around the house. So it's this one person that, that was sick. They had to bring them through the roof because they were just thinking by any means, I got to get my mans in front of Yahushua because I heard he healing people for real. So they, by any means necessary, they try to get them. They lower them through the roof. Like, look, let's get to it. You know what I'm saying? This, that, and other. So they lower them through the roof. Y'all sure look at the man and say, your sins are forgiven. Everybody else who just trying to see what's going on, they looking at him like, whoa, 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 buddy. It's, I see you healing people and stuff, but that's a bit much. Like, who are you to forgive people's sins? That's what God does. They looking like that, like, nah, you're going too far with that forgiveness of sin stuff. So Yahushua hear it. He heard, he heard in his spirit that these people talking like, nah, you can't forgive sins. No man can forgive sins. He heard it in his spirit. And then watch what he say back to them. It's a bad boy talking. Why reason ye the things in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee. Or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. So now Yahushua stopped. He's like, now, I told him your sins was forgiven. Why y'all thinking so hard about that? Like, why y'all going back and forth in your mind? Like, oh, can he say that? Can he not say that? Do he have the power to forgive sins? He's just a man, this, that, another. Yahushua like, what? why y'all struggling with that so much? Let me ask y'all a question. Which is easier? Is it easier for me to just say in my mouth, I forgave your sins. Or is it easier for me to say, get up and walk? Right? In other words, he's saying, if I tell you I forgave somebody's sins, can't nobody prove that. Anybody can say that. Anybody can walk up and be like, I forgave your sins. Can't nobody prove it. How you know? What is it? Do somebody look different when their sins are forgiven? No. He said, so, so you tell me what's easier for me to tell that lie? Or for me to say, get your butt up and walk from a kid that y'all know couldn't walk his entire life. All y'all know him. He from around the way. This is Crooked Lead Joe. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, and nobody, he, he ain't never darn walk. Right? Then watch this. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise. Take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately, what happened? and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth from before them 
in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. That's a bad boy. You have to understand, these people going back and forth, like, man, ain't no way you got the power to forgive sins. But then he helped them understand, like, okay, let's say I'm lying about that. <laughs> you know what I'm You couldn't prove it. If I'm a liar, that's what I would lie about. Because can't nobody prove it. But you know what y'all can prove? Get your butt up and walk. Show me somebody who could do that. You doubt the thing that can't be proven, but one thing that you know can't nobody do that I'm doing is healing these people. It's easier to forgive sin. He's telling you it's easier to forgive sin. That part is easier. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Watch this. And immediately, oh wait, and he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. All right. So now he picked up another disciple. This is Levi. Um, but his name is another another name he goes by is Matthew. Right. So the, this is the writer. The person he just told to follow him is the writer of the book of Matthew. Right. Keep going. And it came to pass as Yahushua sat at meat in his house. Many publicans and sinners sat also together with Yahushua and his disciples. But there mm -hmm. were many that they followed that followed him. And so, yeah. so so now let so Levi or Matthew was a publican. Think a publican as being somebody who who like who like so remember when we started the gospel, we talked about the history, right? So our history started, or not our history started, but after Nehemiah, our people was still subservient to um, the Persians. Then the Persians got taken over by the Greeks. Now the Greeks were wild boys, right? We didn't read it, but the prophecy says, if you line up all the prophecy, what the prophecy is suggesting is Satan came down in the time of the Greeks, right? He came down and, and, and brought some of the stars with him the first time in the time of the Greeks, right? So the Greeks, was some nasty bad boys. You know what I'm saying? That's why they were so evil. That's why they had so much, so much, so much idolatry and all this other stuff. It started, a lot of this stuff started with the Greeks. They didn't respect nobody's religion. They didn't respect us. They didn't respect nothing we was doing, right? So the Greeks came over and they terrorized us. Remember, we were talking about how they started putting priests in place that wasn't from Levi. Right. And this type of stuff never happened in Judah. We didn't mess with that type of stuff. They took the the uh, the, the the Greeks took a pig and sacrificed them in our temple. That's nuts for us. Like, that's just it's just unbelievably nuts. They put a statue of Zeus inside of our temple. Just the Greeks was just completely disrespectful. Remember, that's where the the feast of dedication or what they call Hanukkah. That's where that came from. So that was our people. Don't think when we see people celebrating Hanukkah and all that, don't think don't think that that came from the Jewish people. A lot of a lot of Israelites think that because they, they don't really know that didn't come from the Jewish people that came from our people. That's a legit Hebrew holiday. Right. It came from our people because we had to rededicate the temple after the Greeks did all that nastiness to it. Right. So they cleaned that thing out. We rededicated it and we called it, you know, Hanukkah or we called it uh, the Feast of Dedication in England. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, our people was on guard for anybody who messed with the state because the people who messed with the Greeks, the Israelites who messed with the Greeks, they came in trying to trying to adopt Greek culture, serve the Greek gods and still kind of be cool with us. They also came in talking about, no, nah, anybody could be a priest as long as, you know, the Greeks are OK with it. So they are kind of traitors. We kind of saw them as traitors. So now fast forward to when he's talking about the publican and the sinners. The, the publicans are seen in a bad light because a publican is somebody who who helps Rome, right? Because Rome took over Greek, the Greeks are, are the Greeks. You know what I'm saying? So they they, they kind of took the empire over and now it's Rome. So now the publicans are the one are the ones that's working with Rome to like collect taxes and, you know, what I'm saying to peep stuff out, all that type of stuff, but mostly like to collect taxes. You know what I'm saying? They kind of keep on eye. So they work for the state. They work for, you know what I'm saying? They work for the government. So we didn't like, we didn't mess with that because it's just like, you kind of a traitor in our eyes. Like you, you, ugh. You know what I'm saying? You working with these Gentiles. 
You know what these Gentiles trying to do to us? You know, at any moment they can trade on us and you helping them. We didn't like that. So a publican and a sinner was the bottom of our society. And it just happens to be these are the people that was around when Yahushua was walking through. Right. So let's let's look at it again. And he passed by and saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Yahushua sat at meat in the house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Yahushua and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto so him. So hold on. It said Yahushua chased down the publicans and sinners, and he had telling them, please believe. Oh. Huh. Read it again. I want because this is where people get it wrong. This is where people get it wrong right here. Right. People get to look at these Christians. They go out and they hold up their signs and they, ha and they hand out what they call them tracks. They mm -hmm. hand out their tracks, their little pamphlets. Right. And they say, yeah, brother, if you just you just put down that that bottle of beer, brother. Jesus loves you, too, brother. Just put down that needle, brother. They go down to the crack house trying to be. Put down that needle. These people having a good darn time and you interrupting them. Brother, look, the Lord loves you too, brother. I'm just here to witness and tell you that back in 95, I used to be a heroin addict too. But Lord saved my life, brother. I'm telling you, the other side is very nice. And they think they're doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like in their mind, what could be more noble than this? I'm down to crack. Let me tell you something. If I'm doing crack, Yo, but bet not come in there talking to me about no darn Jesus. You don't let me darn finish smoking my darn crack. What's wrong with y'all? Right? Do you go to a crack house to find a, a, a saint? Do you go to a crack house to find somebody looking for God? <coughs> no. Look at the order that, that Yahushua has. Pay very close attention to what the brother is about to read. Watch this. And it came to pass that as Yahushua sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Yahushua and his disciples. For there were many. When Yahushua went to go see Levi, he sat in Levi's house. And many publicans and sinners came also to sit with who? Yahushua and his disciples. They mm -hmm. came to them. The sinners came to Yahushua. It's not the other way around. These people got y'all all messed up running around. But this is the type of stuff when you sit your butt down and learn the book and you get it. A lot of times people move too fast. They think, oh, let me go out and let me stand on the strip and let me hand out pamphlets. Jesus loves you, brother. Hey, brother, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I just want you to know Jesus do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And they just hand this stuff out, making a fool of their darn self. And they wonder why they get all these crazy people in their darn church causing problems. Trying to make merchandise of these people. No, man, stuff, yeah, that'll get your numbers up if you want. I can go out there, look, I can go, I can print out some nice pamphlets. I can go out there and hand it out right now. Numbers would be great. All right, numbers would be great. But guess what? What are the numbers for if people ain't being saved? If you want to talk, Yahushua, when he went to go talk to people who want to know about the Most High God, he went to the synagogue. And that's where he talked. Other than that, people were coming to him. If Yahushua was going somewhere, he went, he going to people who were trying to find the Most High God. Other than that, people are coming to him. Let these people come. You do you. You serve the most, most high God and let the most high God send them to you. You ain't got to chase nobody down. You ain't got to listen. When somebody ready to serve the most high God, you do not have to chase nobody down. We about to learn. I'm telling you, through this gospel, we about to learn all that. Keep going. Watch this. For there were many and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is this that he eat and drink with the publicans and sinners? And when Yahshua heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole, no need of the physician, but they that are sick, 
I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used to fast. And when and and they came and said unto him, Why do you why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples fast not? And Yahshua said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As mm -hmm. long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in these days. No right, man so they, they was comparing Yahushua to John. They was like, look, John disciples be fasting. You know what I'm saying? In other words, John disciples, man, they go periods of time without eating, without drinking. You know what I'm saying? Be praying and fasting. And Yahushua was like, yo, disciples, I ain't seen y'all fast. Y'all out here eating. Y'all sitting down eating. Y'all got all these people following y'all. Everybody eat. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all don't fast? You know what I'm saying? Cause you kind of look. You remember the the scene is people trying to figure out is this guy real and like like he doing these miracles, but is he for real? Like is he the one? Like is that really him? Because it's like why is he hanging out with all these sinners? That's how they see it. When they walk up, it's a bunch of people known to be sinners hanging out with Yahushua. So when they look at it like, man, this dude is hanging out with a bunch of sinners, not realizing that he hanging out with Levi and all these sinners came up and he didn't send them away. Normal, normally you would say, no, nah, man, y'all get off from around here. Right. But he didn't send them away because these people came to learn from him or to see him. Right. Keep going. Watch this. No man also sews a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled filled it up, taken away from the old, and the rent is made worse. He's talking about John, right? So he's telling, they ask him the question, why your disciples don't fast? He's looking like, it don't make no sense to fast when the bridegroom, this is a, and when he said the bridegroom, he's thinking about uh, a husband or a, uh, a groom, right? So the bride's groom, right? It makes no sense when he's here, because this is a time to, they about to get married. This is a party. It's a time for celebration. Who would be fasting is what he's saying. So he's saying, I'm like the groom showing up right before the wedding. Nobody's going to fast at that point. This is the time that everybody's supposed to be happy and partying. But he said, there's going to be a time where the bridegroom is going to be gone. And at that point, that's when people will fast because that's when it will be sad and people going to need you. Right. So then he goes on. He said he's about to give an analogy about comparing new to old the so reader watch this no man also sews a piece of new cloth and an old on an old garment or else the new piece that filled it up takes away from the old and the rip is made worse right so if you got a new cloth right as soon as you wash it it's gonna shrink so if you got an old garment and you put a patch over that old garment with a new cloth Right. When it shrinks, it's just going to pull the old garment more and it's going to make it rip. So now the hole going to end up being bigger. That means that that's why when they do that, they take the cloth and they pre-wash it. And then when they put it on there, they know that that new cloth ain't going to shrink no more. Right. So they pre-wash it and they put it it's like, OK, cool. So he's saying you got to put either new cloth with a new patch. And if you do that, they both are shrink together or you put an old cloth with old patch. You know what I'm saying? Knowing both of them won't shrink. But he said, you don't put a new cloth on old garment because if you do that, it's going to mess around and rip. It's going to mess around and shrink and make the whole worse. Right? He's comparing that to himself. You can't apply stuff that John did to me. He said, what I'm giving you is something new. Right. It's important that we understand it because this is coming out of Yahushua's mouth. It's a lot of people that struggle. A lot of people that struggle with the idea like, no, nah, Yahushua just told Sister Pam. And I'm less. This is this is why I want to wait to get back on it. But Sister Pam just asked a question. It's a good question. Yahushua is telling you to go do what Moses did. Right. And Moses is telling you to listen to Yahushua. Right. And it's like that is that's the loop. That perplexes a lot of people. We looking like, wait, Yahushua is just saying what Moses said, right? He ain't saying that new. He just telling you to keep the law like Moses said. But if that's true, then why would you, Moses tell you, hey, 
It's about to be a prophet, a new prophet. He's going to be just like me. And whatever he say, you got to listen to. Why wouldn't he say he going to say the same thing I'm going to be saying, so just do what I say? That don't even make good sense, right? Because he's telling you something new is coming. There's going to be another prophet. He's telling you something new is coming. And then when Yahushua sit here and tell you out of his own mouth, you can't apply what they were saying to me because I'm a new claw. You try to apply me to that stuff, I'll rip that stuff up. It got to be new. The patch I'm giving you got to be applied to new claw. Keep going, watch this. And no man puts new wine into old bottles, else the new wine does burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. If I put new wine into an old bottle, it's going to bust the bottle. Why? Wine is carbonated. The old bottle has already had carbonated wine in it that forced it to expand. It's already at its limit. So now if I put more new wine inside of this bottle that's already been pushed to its limit, guess what's going to happen to that bottle? Blackout. It's going to burst. So y'all, she was trying to explain to you, I am bringing you something new. And what was old does not contain me. It doesn't press me. It doesn't keep me held. I expand past what is old. So now let's make sense of that. We're not going to make sense of all of it. We're going to take it real slow and walk through line by line through all of this gospel until we get it right. But let's make sense of what we know so far. What Moses commanded, he commanded to those in the land of Israel under the law. So when Yahushua is speaking to a man of leprosy, Moses commanded something about leprosy, didn't he? And the man was in the land of Israel, wasn't he? So guess what Yahushua got to tell him? Go do what Moses say. You think Yahushua going to tell somebody to break the law? Right? Far be it from him. He would never tell nobody to break the law. It wouldn't behoove him to tell nobody to break the law. Right? His whole point is that he has to flawlessly keep, keep the law. And he's in the land. Why would anybody break the law? Wouldn't make sense. But at the same exact time, he's trying to message to you and say, what I'm about to give you is something new. The law is law. He's not saying the law is done away with. He's not saying the law is worthless. He's not saying there ain't no place for the law. He's not saying don't keep the law. You never heard none of that from Yahushua. Right. That is this. That is the stupid people that don't understand the book that get us thinking like that. Right. We get to thinking that, well, if it's Yahushua, if we listen to Yahushua, then we don't listen to Moses. Or if we listen to Moses, then we don't listen to Yahushua. Right. Or they got to be saying the same thing. They, they make us think in these extremes. It's neither of those extremes. Right. There are there's the law and there is Yahushua. These are two different sets of instruction, and both of them are valid. Right? Yahushua stands on top of the law. Right? But both of them are valid. If you, if you obey the law, you get the promises of the law. What are some of the promises of the law? You won't have the sicknesses in Egypt. You'll live long on the days. If you obey them, you will live by them. You will have wisdom in the sight of the people, right? Your women won't be barren. These are, these are some of the promises that came with keeping the law. If you keep the law, you should expect those promises. But you should also expect those curses. Because it come with a lot of curses if you don't keep it. If you don't keep it, he say, cursed is every man who don't continue in all these things. You got to take both. When Moses gave the law, he said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. You can't take the blessings if you're not going to take the curses. So you got to take them both with the law. 
So that's what you get when you keep the law. It's still valid. It ain't done away with. Nothing happened to it. It's still important. It's still good. It's still the standard of righteousness. Nothing happened to it. But that is what you get, what the law told you. When you read the law, you never hear nothing the law talking about resurrection. You never hear the law talking about living forever. That's not from the law. The law never told you that. That's new. Yahoo sure tell you that. He's commanding you. I'm bringing you something new right now. That's what he's giving to us. What we have to do is we have to get out of what the thinking that these people are trying to set us up to think, oh, thinking this extreme or thinking that extreme. They both wrong. They all been wrong. They don't know this book. We got to take what the man say. He just told you he bring you something new. What do you think he talking about? Can't try to put no darn, no, no new wine inside of an old darn bottle. I think a darn verse is what he told you. Keep going. Watch this. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began, and they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do thy, why do they on the Sabbath? All day right, there. We'll get that next week. We'll get this one next week. I'm gonna light y'all butt up with this one. You know what I'm saying? We'll get this one next week. Do y'all have any questions? Uh, I think I got them all right. Asking about what about going out into the highways and by byways for being a light to the world. When asking about how y'all sure didn't go out and chase nobody, they all came in. Oh, that's right. The highways and byways. We'll we'll get to that because that's in one of his parables. So we'll wait to get to that. And he also tell us, talk to us about being a light in the world. So we'll get well. We can touch on that one real quick. So he is being a light. That's what. Being a light in the world, that's what it means. A light in the world is not that doesn't mean I'm chasing you down. A light in the world means I'm light, I'm illuminating, and I'm drawing people to me. It's like, you know how you turn on the light, and all of a sudden, that's when you start seeing the bugs and the flies and the mosquitoes and all that? They come to the light. If it's dark everywhere and you turn the light on, I guarantee anybody who wants to see where they're going and wants to be seen, will come to the light. The only people that's going to stay in the dark are the people who don't want to be seen. Who don't want to see. They, they don't want the light to expose them. And that is the difference in what we do. When you get to chasing people down, you go into places where people don't want to be seen. They haven't made a conscious decision that they want to be exposed. And me personally, I feel like you shouldn't expose nobody that don't want to be exposed. You know what I'm saying? You let these people be where they at. Right? Not the roaches come out at night. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Roaches don't want you turn the light on on a roach. That thing gonna look around for a little bit and then scatter they butt, you know what I'm saying? Try to get up under a refrigerator or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Now, the flies, they want to be seen. <laughs> flies, you know what I'm saying? Little stupid flies be, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Little, little, little fly fly right up into it. Yeah. Knowing you about to kill it. But they want to be seen. They looking like, for them, it's more important to come to the light. Right? So that's, the, that's, that's what the light coming in. We're going to talk about the highways and byways. That's in the parable. But I want, I want to read that parable in context and make sure we understand exactly what it's saying. Right? But book ain't you ain't got no example and no no situation in the book where the book is telling us to go to run out to random sinners or random people and just start start teaching them and preaching to them about the word what the book tells us to do is go to the people that want to know about god and let everybody come to you right people is learning about god People want to learn about God. When people are going to a place to learn about God or to discuss God, that's the place that we can go. That's where we can chase people, right? We're we not chasing people. We're not chasing just random people who are making it clear that they want to be sinners. They have no interest. They're not even trying to come to the light because their deeds are evil. <laughs> Any other questions? Did I miss any other one? Mm. Mm. 
I'll speak and to and to all the All right, well let's pray out. I think that's it.